Mr. Carrion, present. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Commission's office at 7109 West Saginaw Highway in Lansing. We are also hosting this meeting remotely using Microsoft Teams. It is compatible with all browsers except Safari. Telephone relay service is available through the phone option. If you are participating via Microsoft Teams, you may also turn on the live captions by clicking on the More button at the top right of your Teams window, then clicking on Language and Speech from the drop-down menu, and finally clicking on Live Captions. As indicated in the notice for today's meeting, if we lose the remote connection, the Commission will not recess. The meeting will be recorded and available for future reference on the Commission's website. In addition, the Commissioners can receive comments via MPSC underscore Commissioners at Michigan.gov. For reference, this email is also included in today's meeting notice. We will have the opportunity, as always, for the public to make comments as provided in the agenda. A few notes about this. Comments are limited to three minutes and one per person. If you would like to make verbal comments, you must do so in person or remotely through Microsoft Teams or call into the meeting by phone. For individuals attending in person and who want to make a verbal comment, please fill out a comment card. Uh, those cards are available at the, the front table uh, here next to the computer. For individuals participating remotely by Microsoft Teams and who want to make a verbal comment, you may click on the raise hand button at any time to be queued up for comment. Um, I see we have at least one person who's already done that. Uh, for individuals participating remotely by phone and who want to make a verbal comment, you may press star 5 at any time to be queued up for comment. Public commenters on both Microsoft Teams and on the phone are added to the same speaker queue and will be called upon in the order they enter the queue. Please do not lower your hand or press star 5 again or you'll be removed from the queue and lose your place in line. And to minimize disruptions, attendees participating by Microsoft Teams or by phone will be muted until we reach the time for public comment. The first order of business is approval of the agenda for today's meeting. I move for the approval of the agenda for today's commission meeting. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve today's agenda. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The agenda is approved. The next item of business on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the July 26, 2023 commission meeting. I move for the approval of the minutes from the July 26, 2023 commission meeting. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the minutes from the July 26, 2023 commission meeting. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Oops, sorry. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The commission meeting minutes of July 26, 2023 are approved. The next item of business on the agenda is consideration of the commission's bylaws. Under Article 3, Section 2A of our bylaws, the Commission conducts an organizational meeting after the appointment of a new commissioner. And in light of Commissioner Carrion's recent appointment, today's meeting is also functioning as an organizational meeting. The purpose of an organizational meeting is to either reaffirm the current bylaws or consider a motion to amend the bylaws. And I recognize Commissioner Paratek. I move to reaffirm the Commission's bylaws, which were adopted on February 6, 2020. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to reaffirm the Commission's bylaws. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The Commission's bylaws are reaffirmed. The organizational portion of today's meeting is concluded. The next item of business on the agenda is the approval of orders and minute actions on the consent agenda. And today the Commission is ably assisted by Staff Attorney Leah Arndt. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Good afternoon. Today's consent agenda consists of six communications matters, 10 electric matters and two, two gas matters and one steam matter. The proposed orders and minute actions for these matters have been thoroughly vetted by the Commission's technical and legal staff and are ready for your approval. I move for the approval of the orders and minute actions on the consent agenda. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the orders and minute actions on the consent agenda. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The orders and minute actions on the consent agenda are approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A1 is case number U-20629, which involves the amendment of the rules governing the service quality and reliability standards for electric distribution systems. The order before you proposes a revised bill credit as required under those rules and invites interested persons to comment. Thank you, Ms. Arndt. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-20629. I second the motion. Just quickly before we vote on this, uh, when we adopted the amended service quality rules earlier this year um, in their final form, uh, we increased the credit from $25 to $35. Uh, made it a credit that recurred um, once you're eligible for each additional day that you're without power. 
um, and made it automatic. You no longer had to apply uh, for the credit. Uh, one of the provisions that was probably um, lesser reported is that we also tied the bill credit to the to the um, rate of inflation. And so the order before us today um, looks at the consumer price index increase of 7.7%, uh, and on that basis, adjust the credit upward with rounding from $35 to $38 uh, once you're eligible and for each additional uh, day. Um, there is a comment period to ensure that, that we have done the math correctly and used the correct uh, inflation index, uh, but this would increase credits uh, again for the second time this year, um, first from $25 to $35 and then for each additional day, and now from $35 to $38, uh, reflecting the, the inflationary pressures that, that have been well reported. Uh, is there any additional discussion? All right, we will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-20629 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A2 is case number U-21189, which involves an application requesting ex parte approval of Indiana Michigan Power Company's Elkhart County Solar Project Renewable Energy Power Purchase Agreement, Sculpin Solar Power Solar Project Power Purchase Agreement, Montpelier Capacity Only Purchase Agreement, and May Apple Solar Project Purchase and Sale Agreement. The order before you grants Indiana Michigan Power Company's application for leave to appeal, but denies the requested relief therein, and approves the company's application for approval of the projects as specifically described in this order. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21189. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? I would briefly like to just thank all of the staff for their thorough analysis of these contracts that we're approving today. These contracts for over 500 megawatts of solar power and over 200 megawatts of capacity from the Montpelier Generating Station are in support of INM's IRP settlement agreement, which was approved this past February. The IRP laid out INM's long-range plan for meeting their customers' electric needs in a reliable and cost-effective way, and this is a step towards achieving that plan. Thank you, Commissioner Pertic. Is there any additional discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21189 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A3 is case number U-21305, which involves an investigation, audit, and review of the methods employed by Consumers Energy Company and DTE Electric Company to secure good electric service and ensure the safety of the public under Michigan law. The order before you approves a protective order for use on this matter. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21305. I second the motion. And again, before we vote, just to, to note that this was um, this audit came out of the order from, from last fall uh, in October 2022 when we announced that we would move to hire a consultant to conduct an independent third-party audit and review of the electric distribution systems of both Consumers Energy and DTE Electric Company. Um, including all equipment and operations. Um, we have since gone through a, a public process, uh, including a, a request for proposals, and ultimately awarded a contract to Liberty Consulting Group, uh, which is based in Lebanon, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Liberty Consulting provides management, planning, operational, financial, restructuring, regulatory, and policy consulting services in the energy and telecommunications services. Uh, the terms of the contract, uh, which was effective, uh, August 1st um, it state that Liberty will file a summary report uh, on the audit's progress by the end of this year with a final report expected in late summer 2024. Uh, the process is already underway. We've had internal uh, planning meetings with them and, and they've had initial meetings with the, the utilities as well. So I'm happy to see this moving forward. Um, the specific order uh, is a, a relatively simple protective order to ensure the protection of um, of uh, critical energy infrastructure information and other sensitive information, even while we continue to do this work in public um, and uh, excited for the, the process to move forward and to, to learn from, from the results of this audit. Is there any additional discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21305 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A4 is case number U-21400, which involves a matter on the Commission's own motion 
to commence a work group for the consideration of financial incentives and penalties as they relate to the reliability and resilience of the electric power system in Michigan. Chief Operating Officer Mike Byrne will describe this order. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, on April 24th, 2023, the Commission issued the opening order in case number U-21400, which directed Commission staff to convene a financial incentives and disincentives work group as part of the My Power Grid initiative and file a report of the work group's investigations and findings by December 31st, 2023. In directing this action, the Commission referred to numerous prior actions to address distribution system reliability and safety. The opening order also provided that an initial focus of the work group shall involve developing appropriate metrics related to reliability, including common industry metrics related to frequency and duration of outages, looking at situations that both exclude and include major storm events. Since launching the work group in April, the Commission has engaged the services of an expert with background in developing and implementing performance-based regulatory approaches to assist in undertaking these activities and staff has been meeting regularly to consider possible metrics and mechanisms. As a result of this internal planning and to facilitate stakeholder discussion on these issues, the Commission developed a straw proposal identifying candidate distribution performance metrics and applicable methods by which incentives and disincentives may be applied. Prior Commission decisions, annual filings, and recent distribution plan filings informed the development. In its straw proposal, the Commission highlights several areas of concern related to distribution reliability performance of Michigan's two largest electric utilities, DTE Electric Company and Consumers Energy Company. For example, Michigan customers experience high outage duration. In reviewing performance for DTE and consumers relative to industry peers, both companies have ranged in the third and fourth quartiles for the past 10 years when excluding major storm events in both Sadi and Katy, two measures of outage duration. When looking at outages attributable to storm events, i.e. those including major event days, the increase in outage duration is considerably higher than industry benchmarks. For consumers in DTE, all-weather KD has resulted in over a 100% average increase relative to KD excluding major event days for the past decade, as compared to the median values for the industry benchmark, which aver averaged just over a 40% increase in KD from major event days. And both utilities are in the fourth quartile for the relative increase in KD from major storm events. Additionally, certain customers and locations experience repeated and lengthy outages. Data reported by utilities show that over 16,000 DTE customers and close to 20,000 consumers customers experienced over seven outages in 2022. Both utilities also report the worst performing circuits and use multiple metrics focused on both frequency and duration, which highlight diverse reliability challenges. Taking into account these identified challenges, the Commission has proposed candidate metrics and mechanisms for stakeholder consideration, which include establishing penalties for utilities whose customers experience four or more sustained power, power interruptions per year. Current service quality standards require that through December 2029, not more than 6% of a utility's customers may experience more than four sustained outages and no more than 5% of customers after January 1, 2030. Utilities would also, uh, under this proposal, be penalized for further having customers experience seven or more sustained power interruptions and would be penalized if a circuit ranked in the top 10 worst performing circuits for three or more years within the past five years. The proposal would also implement uh, suggest implementing financial mechanisms connected to the time it takes utilities to restore power, including a particular focus on restoration timelines during major storms. In today's order, the Commission invites interested parties to comment on the straw proposal. Of particular interest to the Commission is reaction to the candidate metrics, the proposed target performance identified for each metric, and the potential incentive or disincentive mechanisms to be applied to each metric. In addition, the Commission is interested in any alternative metrics or approaches to those identified in the straw proposal. Initial comments are due on September 22nd, with replies due October 20th. Today's order also directs staff to hold a stakeholder meeting after initial comments are filed to discuss the straw proposal and alternative approaches. More information about the upcoming stakeholder meeting is forthcoming and will be shared via the Financial Incentives and Disincentives Workgroup listserv and made available on the Commission's website. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Byrne. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21400. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? Uh, yeah, thank you. I would first like to express my thanks to you, Chair Scripps, and, and to you, Mr. Byrne, for leading this effort to establish a straw proposal for performance-based regulation to help increase the reliability of our distribution grid for our two largest utilities. As many Michiganders experienced this past week, our electric reliability is not where it should be. And I'm optimistic that by putting in place the proper incentives and disincentives that we'll see more progress towards fewer outages shorter outages, and overall reliability improvements to all circuits that need it across the state. I'm looking forward to the stakeholder process to refine these metrics, incentives, and disincentives, and especially looking forward to the ultimate outcome of better electric reliability. Thank you, Commissioner Paratek. Just to add a few additional words, I, there's clear frustration uh, in the public with the number and duration of power outages in Michigan, and we at the Commission share that frustration. Uh, and particularly um, among those who experience outages over and over again and wait um, days after major events. I think this, the focus of, of the straw proposal uh, being presented today is, is to focus on the places where improvement is needed most. Uh, and in so doing, working to better connect the financial performance of the utilities with the experience of their customers. Um, by tying financial metrics to the duration of outages and the number of customers experiencing multiple outages each year, I, I think the straw proposal in front of us today represents a significant step towards a sh our shared goal of improved reliability and resilience. And particularly, I'd, I'd, I'd highlight the focus on customers, not just from the system perspective, but customers. And you see that in the use of metrics like Katie, which is a customer-focused metric, um, CME, which is customers experiencing multiple interruptions, uh, and also the focus on the worst performing circuits, um, targeting continuous improvement to those portions of the system that need it most. Um, when we launched the My Power Grid initiative, I said at the time that the focus of the, the initiative has to be about actions over words, not just report, fancy reports on a shelf, but commission orders that actually implement change to how the grid works. Commissioner Carrion earlier today used the phrase, a bias to action. I think that continues to be the overarching theme of the My Power Grid initiative. And I think the actions taken today, uh, identifying the core metrics that we need to focus on to improve reliability from a customer perspective, uh, tying those metrics to the utility's financial performance, and ultimately uh, providing a path forward, or at least a straw proposal, towards a path forward. Uh, move us significantly closer towards, again, that shared goal of improved reliability. Is there any additional discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21400 is approved. Recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A5 is case numbers U-21415 at all, which involve an application filed by Northern States Power Company for ex parte approval of a temporary waiver of Mitch Admin Code Rule 460.732 subpart R of the Commission's Service Quality and Reliability Standards for Electric Distribution Systems and ex parte approval of a waiver of the utility's reporting of its momentary average interruption frequency index in its case number U-21122 annual reporting template. The order before you approves a temporary waiver of Rule 460.732 subpart R until December 31st, 2024, and defers the decision on the momentary average interruption frequency index matter to the Commission staff for an informal determination. I move for the approval of the order in case numbers U-21415 et al. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, thanks, Chair Scripps. Um, I have a few brief comments. In March of this year, as we introduced earlier, the Commission issued the order cited in case number U-20629 to adopt updated service quality and reliability standards for electric distribution systems or our service quality rules, which went into effect on April 10, 2023. When we enacted these service quality rules, we recognized that given the new upgrades the rules require, smaller utilities might have challenges complying immediately. 
I want to note here that our approval of temporary rule waivers are intended to provide smaller utilities with the flexibility to obtain the technical support they need to comply with our rules without undermining our, our commitment to service quality. In making our standards more stringent, we can approve waivers in accordance with our rules, but these waivers are never intended to compromise our longer-term goals of improving service quality and reliability. Thank you, Commissioner Carrion. Is there any additional discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case numbers U-21415 at all is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A6 is case number U-21419, which involves an application filed by Alpena Power Company for a temporary waiver of Mishadman Code Rule 46732 subpart R of the Commission's Service Quality and Reliability Standards for Electric Distribution Systems. The order before you approves the temporary waiver through December 31st, 2024. Thank you, Ms. Arndt. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21419. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21419 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A7 is case number U-21420, which involves an application filed by Upper Peninsula Power Company for ex parte approvals of waivers of Mishadman Code Rule 46732, subpart H1 and H2, Rule 46732, subpart P, Rule 46732, subpart R, and Rule 46746, subpart 2, of the Commission's Service Quality and Reliability Standards for Electric Distribution Systems. The order before you approves the application with the exception of Rule 46746, subpart 2, which is denied. Thank you, Ms. Arndt. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21420. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21420 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A8 is case number U-21451, which involves an application filed by Upper Michigan Energy Resources Corporation for ex parte approval of temporary waivers of Mishadman Code Rule 46723, subparts 1 and 2, and Rule 46732, subpart R. The order before you grants the temporary waivers until January 1st, 2024 and January 1st, 2025, respectively. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21451. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21451 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4A9 is case number U-21460, which involves an application filed by Consumers Energy Company requesting ex parte authority to create a regulatory asset or liability for the purpose of deferring funding related to the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act of 2021. The order before you approves the application. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21460. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21460 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4B1 is case number U-21308, which involves an application filed by Consumers Energy Company requesting authority to increase its rates for the distribution of natural gas and other relief. Staff mem member Cindy Kreischer will describe this order. Thank you. And good afternoon, commissioners, staff, and guests of the Michigan Public Service Commission. On December 15, 2022, Consumers Energy Company filed an application with the commission for authority to increase its retail natural gas rates and for other relief as requested. The company requested authorization to adjust its natural gas rates to provide an additional annual revenue of approximately $212 million based upon a projected 12-month test year ending September 30, 2024. 
The company stated that the requested rate relief was necessitated by ongoing investments in capital infrastructure as well as operations and maintenance expenses to provide safe, reliable, clean, and efficient natural gas service, ongoing investments in technology for operational efficiency and customer satisfaction, and increased financing costs. The company also included requests for a return on common equity of 10.25% and an overall rate of return of 6.09%. The company also requested two rate making mechanisms, the defined benefit pension and other post benefit employment benefits volatility mechanism and the uncollectible deferral, deferral refund mechanism. On July 21, 2023, the company filed a settlement agreement executed by the company, commission staff, and intervening parties that resolved all issues in this case. Through the settlement agreement, the parties agree that the company should be authorized to increase its rates effective October 1, 2023, to reflect a revenue increase of $95 million annually over the rates previously approved by the commission order in case number U-21148 on July 7, 2022. This rate increase represents an authorized rate of return on common equity of 9.9% and a common equity ratio of 50.75%. The parties also reached agreement related to tariff sheet revisions consistent with the provisions of the settlement agreement, capital expenditure amounts and target installation mileage related to the enhanced infrastructure replacement program, maintaining monthly customer charges for residential A1 and GS1 service classes, and implementation of the pen pension and other post-employment benefits volatility mechanism, where any difference is recorded as a regulatory asset or liability for future recovery from, cre from or credit to customers. <clears throat> Additionally, the company agreed to certain provisions related to collaboration with staff and other interested parties to provide information and support related to further reduction of main installation unit costs for the enhanced infrastructure replacement program, providing a cost of service study that shows allocation of other distribution plant by FERC account and calculates impact of using average and excess allocation and allocating between high pressure and non high pressure and conducting a work group to discuss the group transportation service pilot program, including good faith attempts to address reasonable concerns from gas suppliers. Upon approval of this order before you, Consumers Energy is authorized to implement the rate increase and tariffs approved by this order on October 1st, 2023. Thank you, Ms. Kisher. I move the approval of the order in case number U-21308. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21308 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt. Item 4B2 is case number U-21366, which involves an application filed by Michigan Gas Utilities Corporation requesting authority to increase its base rates for the sale, distribution, and transportation of natural gas along with other relief. Staff member Cindy Kreischer will describe this order. Thank you again. On March 3rd, 2023, Michigan Gas Utilities Corporation filed an application with the commission for authority to increase its natural gas rates and for other relief as requested. The company requested authorization to adjust its natural gas rates to provide an additional an annual revenue of approximately $19.1 million based upon a calendar year 2024 projected 12-month test year revenue deficiency of $18.5 million and an additional $0.6 million to reflect depreciation rate adjustments from case number U-21329. The company stated that the key drivers for the requested rate relief are investments in capital infrastructure to address the safety and reliability of the company's natural gas system, historic inflation levels impacting the costs for materials and labor, and significant increases in interest rates that occurred in 2022. The company also included requests for a return on common equity of 10.4%, continuation of its pipeline replacement surcharge rider, including updates to the projects included and forecasted capital costs, 
and a two-year extension of the rider to 2029. The company also included a request for continuation of the waiver for meter testing requirements as granted in case number U-21114. On August 15, 2023, the company filed a settlement agreement executed by the company, commission staff, the Michigan Department of Attorney General, the Retail Energy Supply Association, the Association of Business Advocating Tariff Equity, and the Citizens Utility Board of Michigan that resolves all issues in this case. Through the settlement agreement, the parties agree that the company should be authorized to increase its rates effective January 1, 2024, to reflect a revenue increase of $9.9 .9 million annually, which represents an authorized rate of return on common equity of 9.8%, and a common equity ratio of 51%. The increase in base rates also includes implementation of new depreciation rates approved in case number U-21329. The parties also reached agreement related to tariff, tariff sheet revisions, treatment of the company's digitization project investment as a regulatory asset to be amortized over 15 years, the company's customer charges for residential, general services, aggregated, aggregated transportation, and choice will remain in, fact, in effect. Authorization to maintain, without change, the demand response pilot. Authorization to maintain, with the implementa implementation of certain revisions, the residential income allowance, low income allowance, and senior bill assistance programs. Authorization to continue the main replacement program through 2027 with surcharges paused from January 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. And continuation of the request of waiver related to meter testing requirements to remain in effect until December 31st, 2028. Upon approval of this order before you, Michigan Gas Utilities Corporation is authorized to implement the rate increase and the tariffs approved by this order on January 1st, 2024. Thank you again, Ms. Kusher. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21366. I second the motion. And just briefly before we vote, um, I want to express my thanks as well, Ms. Kusher, for, um, for your work on this, including not just one but two presentations. Um, there were important distinctions between these two um, gas rate case settlements that, that I think deserved each of them to, to have their own um, own highlight. Um, but I also want to thank you and, and our staff for your work in the, these cases, as well as the, the companies, uh, the Attorney General and her office, and the, the other interveners representing uh, customer interests. I think both this and the, the previous uh, order represent constructive and reasonable uh, resolutions to the many issues involved in, in these uh, rate case applications uh, and appreciate the, the effort that went in uh, to resolving them in a, in a comprehensive manner. Uh, is there any additional discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21366 is approved. I recognize Ms. Arndt for the last time today. I rec or excuse me. Uh, item 4B3 is case number 21 U-21369, which involves proposed amendments to the rules governing gas safety. The order before you approves the rules for forwarding to the Michigan Office of Administrative Hearings and Rules and the Legislative Service Bureau. Thank you, Ms. Arndt. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21369. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21369 is approved. We've now reached the time reserved for members of the public to address the commission. Uh, as mentioned in the notice for today's meeting, we will take public comments in the following order, first from individuals attending in person and then from individuals participating remotely, either through Microsoft Teams or the phone who have entered the speaker queue. Madam Secretary, do we have any speaker cards today? Is there any member of the public participating in person who would like to provide public comment at this time? Okay, we will now go to the, um, the virtual options. Um, for individuals participating remotely by Microsoft Teams and who want to make a verbal comment, 
Uh, again, you may click on the raise hands button to be queued up for comments. When it is your turn to speak, please click on the mic button to unmute. Uh, individuals participating through Microsoft Teams also have the option to turn on their camera. Uh, for individuals participating remotely by phone uh, and who want to make a verbal comment, again, you may press star five to be queued up for comment. When it is your turn to speak, press star six to unmute. Um, public commenters, again, from both Microsoft Teams and the phone are added to the same speaker queue and will be called upon in the order they entered the speaker queue. Uh, as a reminder, this public comment period is for commissioners to listen to comments and concerns and not to answer specific questions. When providing comment, if you're willing, uh, please do share your name and where you live uh, so that we have it for our records. And again, please limit comments to one per person and keep them brief, no longer than three minutes each. I believe we do have at least uh, one hand up, uh, two hands up, sorry. Um, folks who have been waiting patiently as, as we work through the, the business items on the agenda. Uh, I believe Gina B, um, you are first up in the speaker queue. And if you want to uh, unmute yourself, we'd love to hear from you. Hello, I've unmuted myself. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. I'm Gina Brandolino and I'm a resident of Ann Arbor near Stadium in Packard. I recently used your site to file an informal complaint after a two day power outage in late July made it 10 whole days and additional partial days that I've been without power since the start of this year. And it's still only August. I narrowly missed another power outage last week when the other side of my street was without power again for nearly two days. I'm here at this meeting because I'm angry and frustrated with DTE's response to my informal complaint and this commission's role in the complaint process. DTE responded to my complaint with an email that said, quote, to improve your power quality, the circuit that feeds your neighborhood is tentatively scheduled for full maintenance tree trimming in 2024. This response is dismissive and patronizing, and worst of all, it implies the number and duration of my outages is not only acceptable, but will continue at least until whenever the tentative tree trimming of 2024 happens, and that could be more than a year from right now. My neighbors and I are far from suffering the most outages from DTE, but even our outages have had an enormous effect on us. We've lost thousands of dollars of food and prescription medication that needs refrigeration, which is both a money and a health issue. Our local grocery stores have also been without power during outages, making it difficult or impossible, depending on our circumstances, to shop for food and other essentials, usually for days. And the outages have affected local businesses. Eat Restaurant on Packard closed permanently because of outages. The owner of York, a restaurant down the road from Eat, told me that when he has power and can remain open, his business makes $11,000 a day. York has been without power for nine days so far this year. The owner of Thrive Massage, also on Packer, told me her business makes $2,000 a day, and she too has been forced by outages to close nine days so far this year. And it's not just these small businesses that are affected, but also their employees who can't work if businesses are closed. Your commission's mission statement identifies your role as being, quote, to serve the public by ensuring safe, reliable, and accessible energy. Yet as best I can tell, your process simply points those of us with complaints in the direction of DTE, and you expect that they'll do their job. They are not doing their job. After hearing from DTE, I contacted your office to ask for more help with my complaint. The representative I spoke with was sympathetic and friendly, but he admitted he could do nothing to advocate for me with DTE. This situation has reached a crossroads and you need to do more to uphold your mission statement by helping us in our efforts to ensure reliable energy for our homes and families. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Brandolino. Appreciate you participating today. Um, the next person we have the, in the queue, I believe the last Four numbers are two, four, three, three. I believe that's right. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Am I on? You are. Um, I'm not gonna be as I'm not gonna be as uh Ron Bayer from Livonia. I'm not gonna be as eloquent as Gina just was, but I just wanted to start off with reading the mission statement according to your website. The mission of, mission of the Michigan Public Service Commission is to serve the public by ensuring safe, reliable, and accessible energy and telecommunications services at reasonable rates. 
you are failing miserably. I've been in my home for 26 years, and for the last two years, I've had nothing but one outage after another. Last August, I was out every other weekend, my power went out every other weekend, and after losing hundreds of dollars in food and medicines and things of that nature, I get one $35 credit. Doesn't come close to the money I've lost. Almost everybody I talk to is either has a generator or is in a process of getting a generator. The, the CEO of DTE apparently received a $10 million compensation package last year, including a bonus. A bonus for what? They can't keep the electricity on. And so I'm asking, to quote a line from Office Space, if you're here to, as, to keep the energy reliable at a reasonable rate, could you tell me what it is you do here? Because you're not doing that. We, I, mean, I mean, I'm not in the middle of nowhere. I'm in a well-established suburb of the city of Detroit, and I feel like I'm in a third world country where they, they can't keep its power on. It's ridiculous. What, it is, what is it that you do here? Because I don't know. They pay ridiculous amounts of money to a CEO that can't keep the whose company can't keep the lights on. They take too long to get things fixed. I have a brother-in-law in the energy industry in Western Pennsylvania. They don't have outages like this. They've been called upon in the past to come up here to help fix the outages. They haven't lately. I don't know why they're not. Are they trying to save money? Well, take some of that $10 million and get some people up here and get these things fixed quicker than three, four, five days of outages, 10 days apparently in some places. And this is affecting me personally, people personally in terms of their lives and their food. It's affecting businesses. You're gonna not get more, you're not gonna get business into this area when they can't keep the lights on, can't keep power. It's ridiculous. Businesses are having to go out if they want to open to, to rent a generator. I was at a restaurant in Livonia this past Sunday. They had to rent a generator in order to open the business. That cuts their bottom line. So I once again ask, you give lip service about, you understand people are upset, but this has been going on for well over a year. Last August, as I said, every other weekend, our power was out. You've had a year to do this and nothing has happened. I'm, I'm sorry to tell Gina, what they have done is they, they hacked the DTE, hacked the heck out of my tree in the backyard. So it looks terrible. I don't know if it's going to survive. And guess what? It didn't do anything because the power still goes out. So I'm sorry to say, Gina, when they get around to cutting your tree in 2024, don't hold your breath that they're going to be able to keep the power on because they hacked the heck out of mine and the power still goes out. So I just like I say, I know you're not answering and this is just for my public comment, but what it is you do is what is it that you do here because you're not doing your job according to your mission statement, you're not coming close to completing your mission, and we are all suffering as a result. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you calling in today. Do we have additional folks in the queue? If anybody raises their hand at this point. Okay, with that, we'll conclude the public comment period of today's meeting. Um, just before we um, close, I want to uh, sort of note two things. The first, the, again, there's, there's clear frustration um, after another significant weather event, um, seven tornadoes in, in the state of, of Michigan and, um, and efforts underway to, to address it. Um, but more than anything, I, I want to acknowledge the, the, the frustration and the, the challenges that um, these types of outages create and also express my thanks um, and I think the thanks of the commission to the line workers, control room, op control room operators, and vegetation management for professionals who are out in the worst of it, um, working sort of around the clock to, to try and get people's power back on. Um, those efforts um, don't go unnoticed and, and are very much appreciated. Um, I also wanted to highlight um, that earlier today, Governor Whitmer provided a, a what's next address that covered a number of topics, but included a number of things connected to the, the commission and Michigan's energy future, and including pushing towards a 100% clean energy standard, uh, improving some of our already uh, best in class energy efficiency programs, um, and uh, potentially moving siting to the, the Public Service Commission so that we would site um, renewable energy generation in the same way that we already cite for, for pipelines and electric transmission lines. Um, I just want to acknowledge that what she's put on the table, uh, that we're excited to continue to partner with her and, and our legislative partners in, in the efforts um, that sort of get kicked into to high gear today uh, and, and look forward to the, the discussion on how we can contribute to, to the vision that she laid out today. Uh, with that, are there any additional announcements from either of you? All right. Our uh, next regular commission meeting uh, is scheduled for Thursday, September 28, 2023 at 1 o'clock p.m. Is there a motion to adjourn, Commissioner Paratek? I move to adjourn today's commission meeting. I second the motion. 
We'll now have a vote on the motion to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by a unanimous vote. The meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody.